Well, hello everybody. My name is Jeremy. I'm from a YouTube channel called Red Means Recording. And today I want to talk to you about the Machine Plus's auto sampler mode. This was added in the most recent firmware update as of the recording of this video. And while it can do some really, really interesting basic things like take uh, synthesizers like these and sample notes of them over time, um, you can actually do some really interesting stuff with it. Uh, and that's what I want to show you today. So uh, just to whet your appetite, here's something I made sampling these two friends, which we will do, and uh, some beats from the internal stuff. Before I ask the question why you might want to use an auto sampler, let me explain to you how it works real quick just with a really basic internal auto sample. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a instrument. It doesn't really matter which one. Let's load up this nylon guitar. So if I go over my keyboard, you can hear this. What's it made with? Prism. We are at 30% CPU right now. Just keep that in mind as we sample this. So obviously I can play this. Also note that it has velocity sensitivity. That's gonna come into play later. So let's go into sampling and let's change the mode to auto to start working with the auto sampler. We'll come back to the sample length and note on. Let's go to our input right here. External stereo, nah, we want internal and we want that little nylon thing. So make sure you set this. Let's go over to here, note map. Note map is the range of notes that you wanna sample. So if we go back to our keyboard, we'll see this is C3 and this is C4. So if we wanted to capture between C3 and C4, we would set that here. So it's a good idea to have a sense of where you want to uh, sample the notes because you might not want to sample the whole range. This can become a very long, intense process uh, in terms of time. Stride. Stride represents at one that it will sample every note between C3 and C4. If I set this to two, then one note will represent two semitones in that range and three or four. It depends on the range and it depends on the stride. If I put 12, then one note will uh, represent everything from C3 to C4. That one note will get repitched above. So the more accuracy in terms of your pitch sampling you want, the lower the stride number you want. Of course, that does increase the time of your sampling. Extend. If you have a range here that's not the full range of the keyboard, then it will extend the lowest note all the way down to the lowest available note you can play, and the same with the top. Next up is our velocity map. By default, this is set to 100-100, meaning that it won't sample any variations in velocity. But as we determined, there are. So let's set uh, some velocity differences. Let's go down to like 60 and up to 127. Stride here does the same thing. If I say one, it will, <laughs> it will sample a note for every point between 60 and 127. And while you might wanna do that for a very, very complicated sort of uh, multi-sample instrument, which we will do later with a piano, you don't necessarily wanna do it with like synths. And you especially don't wanna do it if there's no velocity sensitivity to the instrument. So I'm gonna do a stride of, let's say, well, I want three zones, so let's do 30. All right, next up, find loop. This is very, very, very useful and very, very cool if you want extended things. We're not gonna use it right now, but we will use it later. Trim silence, yeah, let's turn that on. And then normalize, we'll take the sound and push it up to uh, zero dB at uh, each point. So it will make it as loud as it possibly can. I'm gonna leave that on for right now. Let's go back to this. So sample, how long is the sample altogether? Like how long is the sampling process? This is a very short note. So we can take this down to like one second. And you'll see note on starts to uh, drop as well. Note on is how long it holds the note for. So we're gonna put 0.5 here, all right? So with that, let's go ahead and sample our guitar. I'm just gonna hit start. There's the velocity. Now it's gonna move up each note at three velocity levels. You can see how many it has left to do. So you can determine how long this is gonna take. Also, how long it takes is determined on the sample length and the note on. Well, mostly just the sample length. So I'm going to let this finish up. Okay, so this gives us a bit of visual information in terms of what it just did. This is a sample map. 
You can see the range that we sampled, C3 to C4 there, has a bunch of slices in it because it sampled a note for each one of those. And then this is the extend part here. And you can see our three velocity levels and you can play them. Pretty cool, right? So now if I go back to pad mode and I find that nylon guitar, we're at 30% CPU right now. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. And now we're at three and we have the same sound that we wanted. So here's one of the main reasons that you might wanna use auto sampler. It dramatically reduces the overhead of the instrument. And depending on how you auto sample, uh, you still have almost all the expression that you might want. Obviously you don't get access to the macros and uh, internal synth engine that made the sound, but uh, that's not always what you need. The other reason that you might want to auto sample is because it gives you access to uh, the sampler instrument, which has a whole nother set of things available to it. For instance, I can reverse this sound. I can't do that with the original sound, right? I have a amplitude envelope, I have effects, I have a filter, I have modulation. It's a whole nother level of uh, stuff that you can add to the instrument um, that you couldn't add necessarily in the original. And it's really, really cool. I mean, if you remember what our original sound sounded like, that's very, very different. And we're still much, much lower in CPU than we were before. I like that a lot. I think we're gonna leave that on channel one. With this same instrument, I wanna show you uh, looping and um, the creative uses for it. As we know, this is a very, very short sound, right? So let's go back into sampling. And uh, I'm going to just go over here and say, find loop on. So I'm gonna leave all the other settings the same way. And then, uh, oops, I need to do this. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so let's see what happens when we tell it to find a loop in this incredibly short sound. Cool. Look at that little friend right there. That's a loop point. Now, What you can hear is some clickiness as it goes through that. And that won't always be the case. What we're looking for here is a position, that, well, what the machine is looking for here is a position that it can create a, a loop that has like no zero crossing issues that seamlessly goes around. But in some cases it won't be able to, but I think that's fine. I really like the way that this sounds. I think it's very, very cool. And we can still like reverse it, turn the release up, attack up, And now we have a cool semi-granular pad from a tiny little nylon sound. Isn't that dope? I think that's super cool. <laughs> that normalization can get pretty hot, so keeping that in mind. <laughs> so remember, it was that tiny little nylon puck, and now it's this. So, are you beginning to understand why an auto sampler is pretty dope? We already have been able to take a simple, tiny little pluck and turn it into things that were much, much more interesting. And we are at 19% CPU for these two sounds with all the effects on them, whereas previously we were at 30% uh, with just one instance of that nylon. So we have the ability to save on CPU. We have the ability to transform our sounds uh, once they become samples in ways that we couldn't when they were since. Both very, very cool. And the third way that you might want to use an auto sampler is to bring in sounds from other devices. So it's about time that we get first the mono and then my new favorite, Akemi's Castle, involved in this production that we're doing right here. Let's cut to that. And we're back with the Norand Mono. This is, uh, in my opinion, very dusty, first of all, uh, one of the most uh, interesting mono synths on the market right now. I have a video on it on my main channel. I've done some work with it in various ways. And um, what it is is, I mean, if you're familiar with like 303s, it obviously sort of has a 303-esque sort of vibe to it. But what's very interesting about this is that 
Every single parameter on this synthesizer has a dedicated what they call XMOD and X envelope section. XMOD is an LFO with various uh, rates and shapes. And then X envelope is a, uh, a dedicated envelope. So every parameter you see here, uh, instead of a mod matrix, we have access to these things, which means that there's a lot of modulation available in this, which means when we auto sample, we can take advantage of that modulation to do velocity groups and interesting things like that to create very, very, very interesting sounds. Before we do that though, we need to set some stuff up. First of all, let's go into our settings here and make sure that our MIDI is set to on. We have to make sure that our Machine Plus MIDI 1 output is on, all right? And we have that. I also have the uh, USB on in case we need to use that later. Next up, we need to go and set up this channel to send and receive MIDI and audio. So I'm gonna go into macro set. I'm gonna go to output, first of all, and I'm gonna see, uh, let's see, MIDI right here, MIDI and I'm gonna select the MIDI output that I wanna use. Channel one, all good. And then input audio from, I have this plugged into one left. Now, if we're lucky, All right, I'm gonna go over to the mono here and I'm gonna create a sound that I want to sample. So I wanna take advantage of the fact that there's all this modulation to add some to that detune. And this detune. You can get some nice like flow there. I'm gonna modulate our wave shape. Same with here. And I'm gonna modulate the filter type. Very cool, right? Cool, I like that, I think it's very cool. Now, because we have stuff in the auto sampler, the sampler device in the machine, the sample playback device, that has controls for filter and amp envelope, I'm not gonna worry about that over here. I'm gonna set this to have zero release. Oh, it does have velocity sensitivity, cool. And that way, I can work on making sure that my sampler doesn't have to like wait for that long release and I'll put it in in the thing. So let's go ahead and sample. I'm gonna go into sampling and I'm going to set my settings up. Now, what do I, C2, this is gonna be a long one, to C6 and three levels of velocity, I think. Two, two C6. I'll put a timer on screen as this is sampling so you can get a sense of how long it's gonna take uh, if you wanna do something like this. Extend on stride one, velocity map, yes, yes, uh, yes, 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 great. So here, I want the sample to be three seconds long and I want note on to also be three seconds long. I'm gonna put these right at the same amount. So we're gonna capture three seconds, two, three, yes, four seconds. There's a lot of modulation going on there. Four seconds. Uh, of each note between that range. And we're gonna have three velocity levels. So this is gonna take a while, but I promise the results will be worth it. Let's go ahead and start after I tell it to. <laughs> Pull from external mono in left, MIDI to machine plus. Yeah, don't forget to do this stuff right here. Uh, even though we set up the channel to play like that, uh, it still needs to be set up within the sampler itself. All right. Start the timer, here we go. Oh my goodness gracious. So however long that took, let's put the final total up here. Blah, it takes a long time. I went and made some coffee, uh, you know, did some laundry. Um, just keep that in mind when you're getting into this. Okay, so what did we get for all of that work? Well, uh, we got some very, very interesting multi samples. Let me go ahead and turn this down because it's gonna be rather loud. Listen to that. 
And depending on how hard I hit it, of course, I get a different set of modulation on that note. So we have now stuffed all of this cool movement into this sound, and we are also playing it polyphonically, something that this friend cannot do. So, uh, yeah, it's a way to turn your analog mono synths into uh, analog polysynths, sampling-wise, at least. So let's go into the uh, plugin for this, and let's go ahead and manipulate it a bit. Give it some, like, cool vibe. So yeah, very, very transformative. I'm gonna grab one more small instrument on this. Let's go to here and let's go ahead and sample a, a little like uh, bass line for this. And then we're gonna move on to Akemi's Castle, which is super, 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 super fun. And we're done. Listen to that, that's just one note. I'm gonna do that again. Uh, I'm not gonna make you watch it, but I'm gonna do that again with uh, out the loop on. I don't need that loop stuff. Yeah, that's cool as hell. A little bit of chorus. We are still so low on the CPU. Yeah, and a little bit of beat delay. Turn the stereo up. Awesome. Let's reset and switch over to a modular system and uh, grab some stuff from Akemi's castle. Well, hi, I'm back. And look, I brought friends. So uh, this is a small little modular setup I built to show this off because uh, recently I got Akemi's castle and I knew it was going to be perfect for this. And the reason why is because it can get so diverse based on how uh, the settings are set up and responds very, very well to modulation. And as we've seen with the mono, when you modulate something heavily as it's being sampled, you get very, very interesting things. So this is an FM synthesizer, if we bring it in real quick. Uh, it is based on a Yamaha chip, I believe, from the Mega Drive. Could be wrong on that. Please uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But basically, we get all this wonderful FM goodness. So we're going to modulate this and sample it a bit. I have stages here to do this. Just a bunch of LFOs, you know, nothing, nothing fancy. Just LFOs. All right. So for this one, I'm going to do the first four to level of this. We'll adjust our settings here. Already very, very cool. Let's put some stuff into multiplies. <laughs> a little goes a long way here. Nah. I think that's good right there, actually. That's a pretty cool pad. Okay. So I'm not using a VCA because, uh, or envelope generator, because I don't need to. Um, I can use the built-in sampler controls in here to do that for me once I sample. So let's get to a sampling, shall we? I'm gonna turn find loop on and see how it works. We have no velocity. So we're gonna set this to a hundred. Though there is a velocity out of our friend here and we could use that. And I actually might use that for our chord sampling, which we're gonna do next. So set this to 100, strides once, fine. All right, what sample key do we want? So that's C2. We're gonna do C2 to C5. If I sampled velocity, I could get even more interesting modulation. So maybe we will do that. Uh, we're not, again, we're not doing velocity. We're using the velocity mapping to give us uh, the ability to get two notes uh, that we can play per pad, which um, is cool. All right, turn this up. And start. All right, I had to go take a COVID test.
Fingers crossed. Uh, so, but I'm back. I, I actually did a little bit of uh, practicing here on this pad, this thing that we had that I just played for you, that raw thing, and here's what we got. Pretty damn cool, right? Again, polyphonic where this was not before. Okay, the last thing I wanna sample from the Akemis is uh, its chord mode. So if I turn this up, and while you're doing this, you may forget that you need to go in, <laughs> you need to go into the uh, thing that you worked on previously in the uh, macro settings and turn off the audio input. Uh, that would be right here, none. And you might as well turn off the MIDI uh, output as well, just so you don't accidentally send information out to your uh, thing. You only want one channel doing that at once. If you have multiple MIDI and audio IOs, like with one of the native instruments audio interfaces, you'll be all good. COVID test is still negative. I got 10 minutes left on the thing. Wish me luck. So pad mode, this one right here, we're gonna go into macro settings, input audio left one and Output, MIDI, channel one. And now we should be back here. Yes, so for right now, I'm gonna get rid of these modulation sources, just for right now. And I'm gonna turn up the chord. Yeah, it's nice. So I can use velocity here on a couple things. I could use it on the chord inversion. That's actually pretty cool. I could also use it on feedback. I mean, to be honest, there's no reason we can't do it on both. We do have that power. That's nice. That's really nice. Yeah, let's go. I am not gonna record this because I am running out of camera. So uh, I'll be back in just a second. And we did it. So uh, turn that down. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this down. Got those little inversions and feedback changes. Not very consistent. And that's really not the fault of the sampler. So what can I do with this one? Well, I can go to plugin instance and I can go to its envelope and I can turn down sustain. And turn it into like a little plucky chord thing. Isn't that cool? So that's sampling some modular through this. I'm gonna strike this and we're gonna talk about sampling from software. Hello, I'm back. And uh, this will be the last little demo. I'm not gonna record the whole thing uh, because this is gonna take quite a long time. But what I wanted to show you is how you can record uh, something like Unicorda, which does not come inside the machine. but God, I wish it did. <laughs> so I have the machine software running now and I'm running this in controller mode. And this is my first time trying this. So uh, there may be some hitches, but I'll let you know how the process goes. All I know is that I have Unicorda set up right here. And if I go into my sampling settings, I've already set up some settings here. We're gonna get 200 samples in a certain range. And um, if you see, I have my input set to internal and then I have uh, group one, where the Unicorda is. So I'm actually gonna turn off normalization for this because we do not want our friend to uh, get all squished. We wanna keep the dynamics. I am gonna leave loop on though because I wanna see what happens when we get like a little piano, little piano granular loop. So I'm gonna start a timer when I start recording this. I'll let you know how it goes. By the way, my COVID test is negative in case you were wondering. Aren't you happy about that? I am happy too. Here we go. 
we're going to get a bunch of samples from Unicorda. Start. See you in a bit. We are back. Let me tell you, uh, that took about 25 minutes, it looks like. And uh, we have our piano here in standalone mode. How did I get it over here? Uh, in the machine software that I was using this in controller mode with, I selected the sound that I had just multi-sample and I said export with samples. And I did that to the desktop, named it Unicorder Fragile. All the samples were there. And then I, uh, I took the SD card out of here and I put it into my computer and I put the preset with the samples just into a folder on my uh, user folder in the SD card here. And then I went to browser and I went to sounds user and here it is, it's right here, Unicorda Fragile. And then we have our wonderful Unicorda. And of course we can go and do, you know, weird things to it if we want. Make a reverse Unicorda. One thing to note, when I did this, I turned off the uh, space effects, meaning the reverb in Unicorna uh, in the instrument itself, because I knew I could add that here and I don't want to bake a reverb into my sample. So think about the effects that you're going to want to add yourself and uh, add those accordingly after the fact. Don't leave them in the instrument when you bake it unless you really, really need them. As a general rule of thumb, I like to think of the space effects like reverbs and delays, those are things I'm gonna add afterwards, but things like choruses, phasers, flangers, distortion, lo-fi, um, that kind of stuff, I will leave those in if they are available to me and they are part of the sound itself. Now you have a super spacey unicorda, it's so cool. So, what is Auto Sampler? Auto Sampler is a way to sample content into your Machine Plus or into your machine software that uh, looks at a instrument and says, I'm gonna sample all of these notes in this instrument and I'm gonna sample at these velocity levels. And while it allows you to save CPU on uh, things like Monarch and Prism and stuff like that that have a lot of effects and it would be a little bit CPU heavy, there's a lot of creative applications to it as you've seen today. We've been able to sample monosynths and turn them into polyphonic monsters with tons of really, really cool modulation built into them. We were able to uh, sample Eurorack and take advantage of all the really, really cool things that you can do with Eurorack synthesis, and especially like unique voices like Akemi's, and uh, capture that into a multi-sample that allows us to now use all the cool stuff in the machine to make it even that much cooler. And then finally, you can sample any software instrument you like, whether or not that's in the machine or uh, in your computer, and turn it into something wonderful. I hope this has been informative. I hope this has made your brain feel excited about using the auto sampler for fun and creative things. There's so much you can do with it. You can also use it on drums if you have a drum machine that you really, really like, but I find the drum kits in machine to be pretty wonderful. Um, so that's just my take on that. I'm going to uh, work on a little composition to see us out of here. I thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment if you have some interesting ways that you've been using auto sampler. And uh, yeah, my name is Jeremy. I'm from Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day. The following clip contains strobing and flashing images. Viewer discretion is advised.
Bitches. 